Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where I know I said we were going to be working on aeroplanes today, but to um, efficiently fly aeroplanes we need targets, and to have targets we need maps. And for some reason I don't have a map of Kerbin. Well, I know what the reason is. The reason is that last season I got so fixated up on Minmus that I did everything up at Minmus, but absolutely nothing here. But anyway, I present to you the Kerbinator. Um, now I know I said we weren't going to be, I was going to be doing live commentaries for this sort of thing, but this was really just supposed to be a very quick, um, quick launch, get it up in space, put the maps down, and then in the time it's taken me to explain this, I was really hoping to have summed up this entire mission. Um, a couple of things went wrong, and we will go into that. Maybe not right now, but we will get into that when we get up to the appropriate points in orbit. So what I've got on there at the moment is the multispectral analyzer, the Keythane um, scanner, uh, our two massive solar panels that we just opened up in science, uh, the ion drives that I promised we would uh, at least experiment a little bit with, a monoprop container, uh, and some xenon containers, and a, a girder to, to stick it all on. If you're paying attention, you know what's gone wrong already. But We'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, so I just stuck uh, the standard Blue Jay rocket under, uh, lifter underneath it. Uh, it's just my light lifter that I use for just about everything that's only really going into curving orbit, or at least that was the one I developed back at the uh, earlier stages of uh, the career mode. It's quite a simple thing really, just a small core of uh, three sort of small size um, one meter fuel tanks in the middle uh, with a um, non no with a pivoting engine on the bottom three sets of two fuel tanks on the outside with piv uh, with non pivoting engines on and then three sets of solid boosters around the outside of that uh, I find that when my solid boosters have burnt out I've only got a few seconds until the outside uh, ring have burnt out as well so once I shed those I just turn my nose to horizon because we're already quite high taking quite a steep angle of attack at this particular orbit um, as you can tell from this particular view right here now I should really just like wait it out until we're up at Apple Apps and then uh, thrust forwards all the way there but my fuel is quite low in this stage which is giving me a little bit of concern at this point, but oh, I get over it. Um, but I do, I can only presume out of panic, uh, thrust a little bit early. If I'd waited longer, I could have got more efficiency out of that fuel. Uh, and now we're kind of halfway up in our orbit with, with no real um, delta V to speak of. Uh, which leaves us with the ion drive. Now, if you know anything about ion drives, they're not particularly pokey. I had actually planned for this, I was going to use that, you see that little RCS container there, I was going to put RCS thrusters on and um, yeah, use that to give myself a little push up into orbit here because that's not quite as slow as ion. Um, yeah, I, I obviously forgot that and I'm now watching my periaps number drift up ever so slowly. Uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to jump forwards until we're about the same again past the Apple apps on the other side just so you can get an idea for how well this uh, ion, uh, ion engine is performing without actually having to sit around and watch everything. Bam! Look how much that arc has changed. Um, yeah, so I am really worried at this point. I'm like, well, you know, I've put this up into orbit. We, we're going to gonna just like crash into the pole by the looks of it. I, I, I have a small glimmer of hope um, but it, it's not strong within my heart. So my plan was literally just to uh, to carry on getting ra going around and gathering, gathering as much data as I possibly could uh, at least in the form of maps and uh, keythane information and just hope that this iron engine had it in it. Uh, now if you look at my periap score right there on the top l left you'll see that I'm in the plus numbers now. Now this is amazing. This fills me with with, with um, hope and, and and faith that we can actually make it round. Uh, I pull my nose up a little bit more because I notice we're coming in quite close to the uh, the periaps now. And if we could just kind of ease that periaps up, uh, everything would be amazingly good. Um, my secondary concern is also we have the DRO in orbit around, and we don't want to have these two orbits at the same altitude crossing each other ever. Um, because that would just turn a, a, a slightly um, faulty 
launch into an absolute disaster uh, that's definitely not what we want to do so i'm going to leave this ship flying like this for a moment and uh, find some good footage to explain another problem that i had with this flight so here we see my periaps raising well above the uh, 100 uh, kilometer mark and looking at this little map here we can see that i have a little bit problem with the scansat um part choice on this particular uh satellite um you'll see here that i have a band of altimetry data uh across the middle and i have biome data going round the outside indicating that the multi-spectral analyzer that i thought would do everything for me only does biome and anomaly scanning which is all right that's kind of what i want but i also wanted to do the the radar scan scan as well you can see uh the the, the lit up air writing there telling us which ones this this vessel actually does and it's not all of them and i wanted all of them so poo all right guys welcome back to uh, live commentary with jebediah kerbin, kerbin here uh so what i've prepared here is a little command shot uh, pod with a whole load of stuff stuck around the outside to test to see what i could pick up with the attachment system because let's be honest if i'm going to fix this uh, orbiter we need to be able to at least maybe put this back on no uh, which probably means that the key thing all right so i wanted to put this on uh to the to the the new satellite or the the old satellite that we sent up um oh, unfortunately listen listen to me clicking i can't grab it um which leads me to think that the keythane uh, unit, I'm also not going to be able to grab. Now, the reason I want to be able to grab this is because on one end of my uh, satellite, I have a keythane detector, and on the other, I have the engines, neither of which are particularly great for uh, attaching fuel lines to. Uh, why did I want to attach the fuel line? Well, because I've got no docking ports on anything, because, you know, I'm, I'm good at this game. Uh, no, I cannot grab the keythane unit either. Uh, so it looks like I'm probably so anyway let's test this yeah yeah that looks like it okay so it looks like I'm probably gonna have to build an entire new vessel um, this also calls the Juno reconnaissance orbiter into question um, because it only has the, the 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 spectral analyzer on it it basically has the same functionality as the one we've put up there oh look the moon um, <coughs> which would be great if we're sending it to somewhere like the moon or Minmus or maybe even just going around Kerbal uh, Kerbin, sorry, uh, but we're not. We're going to Juna with it, and on Juna, this um, this map, this uh, biome map, will just all be one color because Juna's all just one biome. That will show me any anomalies that are there, which would be quite nice. Uh, all right, so we're going to have to go uh, make a new make a new one just for this, I suppose. Yeah, let's go do that. Let's recover this. Okay, so. How long do we have? We have 11 days and 4 hours to, to make this right. Um, do we actually want to mess around with the Juno Reconnaissance Orbiter? So here's the vessel. I kind of do want to throw the the the, altim the the what's the other one called? The radar altimeter on here. But I'm pretty sure it will completely ruin the aesthetic I'm going for. Uh, let's have a look. Let's throw this. Oh, look at that. That would be horrendously nasty. We might have to call functionality over over aesthetics here. Yeah, I think we might just launch this one, but I'm going to spend some time replacing that one with this one. We're probably just going to deorbit the other one, um, and we'll watch it crash to Earth in a sec. Why well, I say crash to Earth? Crash to Kerbin in a second. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go do that right now. All right, so it's going to be super easy to deorbit this. We're just going to uh, thrust our way retrograde until we, well, encounter the floor, basically. Uh, I'm not sure what orbital velocity we want to bring it down to, but I know one thing, I don't want... Oh, maybe we want to crash over the top of uh, the Kerbal Space Center. Let, let's do it there, uh, just like that. I reckon that's going to be ideal. Uh, I think even with that, we could probably actually watch it come crashing in which way we go we're going that way yeah anyway, let's let's watch this Whee! okay and here we go into the atmosphere now hopefully now i never get this right but hopefully we're going to be lined up relatively closely to be able to um uh to to land on top of the the kerbal space center it's it's over there somewhere other side of those mountains maybe um 
Now I always aim for maybe halfway or three quarters of the way across this ocean over here. Look, there, there, there's, there's the thing. Um, unfortunately, the atmosphere seems to be catching us really early, actually. Really, really, really early. Um, I'm waiting for my my solar panels to be ripped off. Uh, this should happen also quite quite soon. Uh, let's have a quick look at the map, see what's going on. Yeah, already this is starting to trail back, but maybe we got it right. Maybe we got it right. Um, should we speed up time in a physical warp manner? Um, hopefully we just watch this sail all over. You can really get a, a feel for how thin the atmosphere is compared to the planet when you're at this sort of height. You can just kind of look across and, and see this tiny little arc of blue. All right, so we're starting to get some heating. Uh, coming in very fast at nearly two kilometers a second. There's my YOY um, flag. This gives me an idea of how close in I am coming. Um, yeah, I'm liking this. This is good aim so if we were playing the the mode where where credits count we'd uh, obviously stick a whole load of um, parachutes on this before we bring it back would take a, a space plane up but credits don't count so we're just gonna smash it into the floor uh, we're currently falling at a ridiculous rate falling fa uh, falling down faster than moving forward and oh, quite a, quite a anticlimactic explosion actually that's a shame all right let's get back to the space center and launch another one Right, welcome to the launch site. We're looking quite beasty here. I'm going to ease up my throttle just a little bit um, and prepare myself for launch. We're aiming for a 100 kilometer Apple apps. Oh, I should put some uh, stability control on. Picked up a spin already. I've literally just pressed space bar. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Uh, let's have a look at our resources. Make sure we're not running out of anything incredibly quickly, like, I know, electric charge or something. That'd be embarrassing. Could you imagine not being able to stage because you hadn't um, throttled your engine up? Yeah, who'd have thought, eh? Uh, right, we're going to lean over a little bit towards the east just to make sure that we are travelling to the east a little bit. When I say a little bit, I'm just moving this orange dot to the other side of the white dot. Uh, you can just make it out there. I'm not turning over far at all. That's just enough to make sure that I'm not going uh, westwards. Eastwards? Westwards. Hang about northeast. Uh, yeah, make sure we're not going west. We should be going towards the sun at sunrise. I'm not sure what time of day it is. It's not midday. Ah, we're, we're in the late afternoon at the moment. Well, there we go. Spot. Right, so as I was saying, we're heading for a 100 kilometer Apple Apps. And once we lose these, lose these big solid fuel boosters, we should start to, uh, well, throttle up for starters and also head my nose over a little bit so we can start getting some uh, horizontal momentum building up as well as vertical. Uh, still only down at sort of like 14 kilometers or so, so we don't want to be leaning over too far. Uh, watching my Apple apps, I really want this to be pushing up out of the atmosphere before I think about leaning over towards the horizon. Though I will over the course of the next 30 or 40 kilometers just be bringing my nose over a little bit of a time. Um, I generally just wait for the staging to happen and then lean over a little bit more. I was a little bit early with the lean over that time, but uh, I find that's just a nice nice regular marker for me to know what's going on. Um, yeah, once my, once my fuel burns down, I've got to turn over. That's, that's nice and easy to remember. Um, unlike, you know, at certain altitude and going at certain speeds, you've got to be at a certain angle. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's the more exact way of doing it, um, but that just doesn't doesn't work in my brain for being able to remember. Um, yeah, there we go. So, did we put any lights on this vehicle? This is something that needs to be found out. Yeah, we put le yellow lights on this vehicle, of course, because, you know, we want to make sure that everything is nice and visible when we're on Juno, and what colour stands out more against the rust orange than yellow, of course. I'm thinking I should have gone with blue. Uh, we can't change this when we're in flight, can we? No, we can turn them on or off. I get staging again down to 90 degrees. Uh, Apple apps is starting to, yeah, starting to hit the marker now. Perhaps even work all the way down 
to pointing at the, uh, the, the the retrograde marker so we can make sure just everything's going nice and fast um, now the way that I've been told this works is if you aim slightly above your um, retrograde you're going to be pushing your Apple apps up as uh, fast faster than you would be normally and we're not going for a high apple apps at the moment i mean already it's uh, starting to poke above the the atmosphere according to our uh, atmometer up here i presume that's what you call an atm uh, well it's a pressure gauge right um, we are already outside of our atmosphere so th this should be good uh we're going to nose down even further now we're, we're coming up to the very top of the atmosphere and i would like to get this down nice and low because obviously our carbonator is up at like 200 kilometers and we we don't want to intersect that orbit at any point um yeah all right looking around everything's going well i think we can already classify this as a uh, an orbit success uh, I really don't think we're not going to be making it up to orbit here uh, we've got another another staging to do right now Pum. awesome uh, and then we're just gonna cruise on up this is this is looking good um, not the most efficient angle I've been spending a lot to long time going sideways through the atmosphere and that that wasn't necessary um, I probably could have gone up higher and then across but all in all given the amount of fuel I've got and, and, and what what's going on with this flight I think this was a fairly fairly decent um, flight uh, takeoff launch orbital insertion I suppose it could be it's not quite a capture orbit but we're definitely inserting ourselves into Kerbin orbit mm, insertion um, and at some point I've really got to be thinking about deploying some solar panels before we lose before we turn off the um, the thruster there because that is what's currently making all our power um, I appear to have not put any solid panels on it oh it was on this underside so maybe if we flip back over and expose this to the to the daylight or the sun as we as we like to call it kerbal yeah uh we we should be able to get some power on that one right there okay a parrot oh oh no oh no i skid out and pressed the wrong button um well that's a failed launch as well I can't, I just literally cannot turn this engine off now. <sighs> oh, this is not going to go well. It's not going to go well at all. Alright, well, I suppose we're just going to have to deal with this as it is. Um, and by deal with it as it is, I mean we're going to revert and I will see you back at this point in the orbit when I've not just like been a complete and utter like spaz hand about it. Spaz hand. Okay, welcome back to Breaking the Atmosphere. Uh, hopefully, we're not going to completely destroy this this time. Um, yeah, that was a little bit of a silly move there. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what caused me to press the space bar. It wasn't any uh, actual like thought process, I can tell you that much. It was just a reaction in my gut. Uh, I presume it was something programmed by Mario or like you know, some sort of uh, platformer based reaction there. I saw something in troubling and pressed what I presume to be the jump bar. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, so uh, we're, we're, we're on exactly the same nominal flight as we were last time. The, the only difference is here that I've actually turned myself to be um, uh, having my solar panel towards Kerbal already. Uh, we're just about to go through a bit of staging. Awesome. And I believe this is where I completely spazzed out last time. But we're going to uh, line ourselves up with the horizon here. Reset our SAS. And just carry on sideways like this. Uh, a 71 kilometer Apple apps. I reckon if this gets up to uh, about 90 kilometers. Let's have a look over here. Yeah, if this gets up to about 90 kilometers, I'll probably stop my engines there and then. And wait for us to fly up till just a little bit before Apple Apps um, and then throttle up our engines there looking to do the vast majority of the burn after the Apple Apps so that we don't put our height up too much because if we put the Apple Apps height up too much we could like collide with the other satellites we have up there uh, and then we have like all sorts of like um, space debris issues and uh, no, no one wants that I suppose maybe, maybe future space scavengers that might be nice for them but yeah who knows Right, so Apple Apps is travelling up nicely, Peri Apps is travelling up even better. I think we're going to have a circular orbit very, very shortly. I've got my X, uh, my finger on the X key. Um, oh, 
and my app apps has just hit hit 90 odd kilometers we're going to zoom up round if we can do it without crashing my pc that would be great um a little bit faster okay about here i'm gonna all the things that i just said about my apple apps i'm gonna throw out the window and boost here to try and get it up before we head into darkness that'd be nice um no, I'm actually going to have to stop and wait. Alright, well, I will see you guys round the other side of the orbit where we can actually do stuff without um, running out of electric charge completely because I'm not going to be able to click on that. Right, well, as expected, uh, we're in darkness and we're going to be in darkness until the other side. Um, not great. It's got to be said. Can we throttle up a bit? No, because we're completely out of fuel now. Uh, not fuel, electric. Um, well, all we're going to have to do is wait until we can see the sun again. Um, and once we can do that, we can get in circular orbit. And then I'm probably going to end this episode because I've been recording for a while. And we should have enough enough stuff. Okay, so there we go. Wow, totally pointed in the wrong direction. Swing, it, swing our face around. Just hope that we can uh, get, enough, uh, get enough of a boost going at the moment. I reckon if we just start tickling our throttle here. Yeah, look, look at this. This is going to... Going to be amazing. Uh, to bring this up to 100. Am I at 100? No, I'm below 100, so we'll never get it up. But there we go. 95 kilometers, 172. That's about as uh, erratic as you want it. But I'm going to go with that. And thank you very much for joining me for this rectifying mission. Because, you know, I do everything wrong. I will see you next time where we're going to send this to, to, to Juna. I don't care if there's other stuff to do. We're going to send this to Juna first because I know I want to see that beautiful orange planet. Um, yeah, see you then. Bye!